on numerous occasions you told me that the only time you're going to be happy is when you see this regime buried. Absolutely right. Now the grave is ready. The cask, <laughs> the cask is completely closed. And we're just waiting for the undertakers to take it down. And the undertakers are actually fluxing their muscles down. What are you doing sitting inside of a tent in front of the Sudanese embassy here in London? Yeah, we had to say a saying after the, the last uh, massacre that happened in Sudan in Uruguay. Kids being killed, more than five people reported, younger than 16 years old by the, uh, the military militias. So it was a breaking point for us, like, this is no way back. Like, we got to a point where you even kill kids and little, little people coming out from the school, asking for a simple right for freedom, peace and justice, and where you face them is this life and union. So it came to a breaking point and we're like, we're going to sit here until we get our demand, until we get our goal achieved, until we see our country free, until we get our blood our marriage of whoever lost their blood and we had to get justice for justice for them. Subscribe, comment, and hit the thumbs. What is the reason for pitching a tent okay. here in front of the Sudanese embassy in central London? So even after they had uh, the, they signed an agreement on, the, I think it was the 15th of July, um, they somehow, uh, students from the Wild Nile in Sudan and um, Al Obaid, which is a um, state in um, Sudan, they went out protesting uh, just in solidarity for like this, this, like the way the school education system in Sudan is like depleting. So they went out and then as a result, they got shot instead. So as anger, they decided like, as, as, like they decided to come and do a sitting in, in London here in solidarity for those who got shot. So the reason for the tent being pitched outside of the embassy in Sudan is in solidarity of those who were killed, students, and I believe the city was Oberman. Yes, yes. So it wasn't, it wasn't fair. Like every stu um, student, kids, kids got killed. And it's, uh, it just shows the aggressive and disgusting like, regime that we're, we're, we're against because uh, to kill students and, and just act like it's okay for us to just like sign an agreement and act normal is not, it's, it's, this, is, this is the best outcome that we could do to show that no matter what agreements have been done in Sudan, we're still resilient, we'll still stand up against any form of um, like lack of commitment between, um, from the government.
But what are your demands? My demands are civilian government, all the uh, all, all the uh, the murders to be set to justice. Everyone, uh, yeah, to see my country up there is our demand from the beginning: freedom, peace, and justice. This is what we want. Nothing happened since December, and nothing happened until now, until last night. They wish to have a final agreement, and it's going to be signed within two days. So until the sign it, we are here. But a constitutional agreement has been reached, yes, and true. there are three sticking points. One of those sticking points includes an amnesty for the generals who gave the orders that resulted in the violence and the killings in Sudan. What do you have to say about giving an amnesty to the leaders? Absolutely not. No one is going to get immunity to against anything because what the Sudan we're asking for is everyone to live equal. We're all human. We all live, deserve to live equal. So if you did a wrong, you, you, you deserve to sit down in a court and get justice for it and get, get, uh, get what you deserve for it. But gain a union because you have a military, have a militias. We won't work in our new Sudan. So. What has it been like being down here in front of the embassy in a tent? when you've got a royal palace just a few yards away? Well, this is what everyone says, like, how, how come you guys have made a sit in front of the embassy and in front of the palace? My answer was, this is London. This is London. This is what we asked for, freedom, peace and justice. Well, when, we did, when we get that, we can do that even back home in Sudan. You can demonstrate in front of the, uh, the, the palace in Sudan. So this is the kind of freedom we're looking for in my country. But have you not got to make certain steps before, or you apply to the police before you can do something like this? Not really, because this is my right. It's my right to the peaceful demonstration. It's my right to say, say uh, attend and ask for my rights. And yeah, so this is no. The police tried a couple of times to move us, but we had to tell them like, guys, we're not homeless. We have demands. We have things to do with this uh, embassy so it's nothing it's nothing gonna happen nothing gonna happen to, uh, nothing gonna take us to move from here until we get what we asked for so what has it been like being here because earlier on when we began this interview you said it was hot yes. but when you compare how hot it is here in comparison to those in Sudan this is cold so yes, what's it true. been like and how do you feed, clothe and clean yourselves? Well, uh, the good thing, I don't live far away from here. So we, we, we sit here in shifts. So there are night shift and morning shift, like what happened in Khartoum. So night, when the night shift come, we sleep here. In the morning, we go home, shower, change our clothes. And people take the shift in the daytime. And we come back around this time. We all chill together until the night. and. Whoever need to go home at the night to sleep at home, they go and people. So we walk in shifts. 
it's, it's not only me, it's not three of us, we were eight of us who said this. So we sleep for uh, four to six people here at night. So yeah, we go we go shower, we go change. Yeah, it's not it's not that have our our tent is here. There are always people inside the tent. I am so happy because we are about to win our victory in the Sudan. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? Babika Osman. I see you most weeks down at these protests. That's true. Yesterday, or over the last couple of days, a constitutional agreement yeah. has been reached in Sudan. What are your views on that agreement? Right. Uh, as a lawyer, from legal perspective, I would say um, this uh, constitutional agreement uh, has covered all the uh, conflicted points which people have been sacrificing their lives over uh, to, to bring the civil government. So uh, theoretically, it's it's covered all the points, but now this is the time to practically reflect that on the ground and for the military people to prove the good faith and a real engagement in the revolution. Since we spoke two weeks ago, there's been an agreement in Sudan. Are you aware of the agreement? Um, no, not. I'm not aware of it because as it's a summer holidays, I've been doing nothing but lying in my bed or going out to the park. <laughs> Is this a great day? Um, it is a great day in the sense that I feel like we can finally have a little breath of release, um, knowing that you know the agreement has been reached. But obviously, we're still a bit on edge of, you know, it's been reached. Are they actually going to fully sign? They said they're going to sign in front of the public on Monday. Um, and what's going to happen with the officials that are being accused of being involved in all the massacres that's happened. That's our next biggest worry, let's put it as that. But for now, it's a definitely a sigh of relief. It's definitely a sigh of relief, and I would agree. But just look at that stumbling block. And one of those stumbling blocks is what you've just said and that's an amnesty for the generals yeah. who may have been involved in the unnecessary or the violence. Are people going to agree to such an amnesty? I, I don't think that they will get such full immunity, but are they going to be held accountable? I'm not, I'm not even that positive. I feel like there may be a case where they are may be excused for war crimes in general that's happened but they'd be held accountable for like the last few events which still isn't necessarily the breakthrough we want because that would mean that they're held accountable for things that may have happened in Khartoum but we're again neglecting the outer regions and what have been happening there for years I think how do you define I apologize for yeah, coming sorry. in how do you define someone being held accountable when you're talking about justice. What are you referring to when you mention accountability? How? The first step is that we need to find out exactly who has been behind these crimes. 
Who's given those orders? That's my that's my personal main concern. Where did these orders came from? Who gave those orders? And then they need to be taken to court and need to be justice needs to be served and sent, they need to be sentenced. All the money, any accounts they have need to be completely frozen. That money should be then reinvested back into the country and our government, like transition ministry government and the civilian government um, once democracy has been established. That is like what I feel would be justice and accountability for what's been done. Please explain it to me in context of what has happened this week in Sudan. What has happened is actually um, a, a rung in the ladder of uh, the culmination of the revolution. It is not there 100% yet, but this is a very important step um, in regard of uh, what uh, being achieved now and uh, is going to be declared tomorrow or the day after when the signage is complete, uh, it remains to be seen. We are confident that um, regard, I mean, uh, regardless of the differences of the trajectories and the ceilings of uh, uh, our uh, partners there, but it is a step forward and we hope, we hope they manage to uh, bring us the price that the uh, Sudanese people paid blood, tears and, and, and sweat for. But before we get to that prize, tell me more about the constitutional agreement. The, of course, when the uh, um, a revolution happens, uh, it will do uh, some sort of like a dichotomy with the, uh, the, the, the pillars of the previous regime. Part of it is the constitution uh, of the 2005. We retained only the uh, human rights sections of it because it was up to now the best that the uh, intellectual, the legal intellectuals of Sudan uh, came out with. So in regard of the constitutional uh, document that is going to be signed soon, is actually to, to, to find a legal frame of governing the transitional period until the Sudanese people uh, sit together in a constitutional conference to discuss how do they want to be governed and which type of uh, constitution that encloses all the Sudanese diversities. So it is just, um, what you call it, an umbrella to legalize any steps that is going to be done during the three uh, interim periods, three years of the interim. As you know, there are a few potential stumbling blocks to the agreement. One of those includes an amnesty. Can you tell me more about why that is a stumbling block? It is a stumbling block because blood is not water. To kill with impunity is no longer tolerated in Sudan and it is actually the, the, the frame, the psychological framework that uh, uh, those um, um, brutal uh, uh, despots work from within. You do whatever atrocities and because of the amnesty, because people are not going to uh, take you to task and take you to trial, then people will not stop uh, practicing this uh, uh, infringement of the human rights. So this is one. Two, what happened since 30th of June 89, we are talking about almost or surpassed half a million of Sudanese uh, innocent civilians being uh, uh, claimed by this regime. So this is something has to be put to end and it has to be put in a way that no one will think ever in Sudan to, 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 to uh, like practice such um, atrocities and uh, get away from the holes of the net. Are you confident that later on this week the agreement will be signed? Um, yes, I'm confident some type of an agreement is going to be signed and that is why, uh, uh, for example, one of the, uh, 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 the parties of the opposition, the Communist Party, uh, uh, withdrawn from continuing the dialogue and the discussions because we believe that whatever is coming, it is actually uh, uh, 
a step forward, but it is not the ultimate uh, goal that the uh, Sudanese people uh, strive for all these years to get. We believe whatever is going to come out there is a step forward, um, and with our partners in the street and in the political arena, we'll try uh, and, 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 and work hard to achieve the nine pillars of the uh, Freedom and Change Declaration. I see you most weeks yeah. at the protest, yeah. and like me, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. doing right, your right. little thing to raise awareness. Yeah. How's it been for you well, doing the recording, filming and publishing? Well, it's been great so far, and I actually like it. I'm, I'm liking it. And at the same time, I'm practicing. Um, I'm a filmmaker. I study media at Barking and Beckham College. It, um, it's, been, it's been a great um, time practicing this filmmaking. Um, and also, I'd like to show the whole world about the Sudanese protest. Today's street camp started its journey by going down to the Sudanese embassy, just down the road where an encampment has been taking place all of this week as a direct consequence of the Sudanese community showing their solidarity for the students who were killed in Sudan. And it was a very sombre moment to be there seeing the youngsters in camp, in a camp outside of the Sudanese embassy and only over the road we have a royal palace that is protected by armed officers but these guys and girls they felt so strongly about what happened back home they decided it was important so they decided it was important that they had to protest outside of the embassy until their demands are met and those demands are for freedom, peace and justice for their colleagues, their friends, their families back in Sudan. But then we made our way to Downing Street and we're currently outside of Downing Street where the protest is continuing behind me and the Sudanese community is out here yet again, week after week after week, protesting in support of their family, their friends and people they know back in Sudan. But what was great this week was that an agreement, a constitutional agreement has been reached in Sudan and it's likely that that will be signed over the coming days but overall I think the community, the Sudanese community are happy that finally they will get what they're searching for but the bit they're not happy with is an amnesty being negotiated for the military leaders, the generals, who were likely to be the controlling minds, those who sent the orders out that resulted in hundreds of protesters being killed. But people have told me today they want these people held to account. They must be held accountable, and accountable means that justice must prevail and justice means they must go, they must be charged, they must go in front of a court and they must face justice and if found guilty they must serve an appropriate sentence that is appropriate for the Sudanese people but not only has there been the Sudanese protest today, but street cam is outside of Downing Street. And when I was recording the Sudanese protest, I heard a noise behind me, and that noise was 
horses charging in front of Downing Street and there was a protest, a support of Tommy Robinson who was in prison for contempt of court and I have never seen nothing like it. We had horses, riot horses in front of Downing Street charging and protesters being arrested for public order offences down here in front of Downing Street. But that is the thing about this great country. You can come out, you can protest. The law permits you to protest, but you must not break the law. And when you do break the law, the British police will arrest you and you will go to court and you will face justice. So that is what's been happening today, but it has been an amazing day. It has been a very interesting week, but don't forget, if you like street cam, make sure you give me the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make your comments. So you subscribe to the channel, you give me the thumbs up, and you make your comments. It's important you make your comments because your comments is what helps street cam to improve and to get better. So give me the thumbs up, make your comments and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, when you do subscribe to the channel, it's important that you switch on your personalized notification bell. Subscribe, comment and hit the thumbs.